was the music. I am uh, extremely happy and excited because with me, I have Lucas from Laserbeam, and we just played the song Lost in Oblivion off of the self-titled album, Lost in Oblivion, uh, which uh, I listened to, and I am, um, man, I, I'm really taken back by this album. Such a good album. I, You know what I, I'm really taken back with? The first song is always the most important song in every album because that kicks everything off. And uh, I really enjoyed the first song of that album to just really kick off, um, you know, Lost in Oblivion, which was Sorry for the Heartache. Was that hard for you to choose, you know, the first song to kick it off with? I don't know. I have like every possible imagination of, you know, combos that you could have chose. And then I basically just rolled a set of dice and that's how they landed. Um, Cause I liked them all, but at the same, for that point that you brought up, yeah, you need to set the tone of the album and that this album was really chill and really, uh, smoke a bunch of weed and just kick back in a dark room or whatever and just, just, you know, kick back. So that's kind of the, the vibe of the album. And that song kind of fit perfectly. That was the last song that I actually recorded. And, um, I don't know. It was really uh, lighthearted, I guess, and like really poppy. So I was like, I kind of wanted to start with all the pop songs and get that out of the way. And then get a little more evil because I'm a little more of an evil person. For more information on Laser Beam, make sure to go check them out, laserbeam.bandcamp.com. And, of course, I'm going to have a bunch of uh, other links to provide for you. So go ahead and log on to entertheshell.com for all that information. Um, right now, are, are you in a van? So I'm in. A, I'm a bus driver, so I'm in my bus right now. The, does driving help you just kind of calm down or do you um, often think about like lyrics, you know, while you're driving? Um, yeah, that's actually a really good point. So for me, I used to go to work in a kitchen and that was a great area for being creative. Um, you could just walk into the, the walking freezer or fridge and just sing into your phone and sing up some lyrics real fast or a melody or go back out back when you're washing all the mats and you're cleaning shit or you hear the, uh, the dishwasher spinning on a certain rhythm and you make a little rhythm out of it. Like, but with the bus, it's like, you kind of have to focus on driving. So this is kind of more of a means for, for money for me at the moment. It was kind of like, a yeah, I can't be washing dishes forever. So I need something that pays a little more. So, <laughs> But the mid part of the day is good for being creative, like right now. Like I my dad has a studio across the street too in San Jose. Sometimes I go over there and we'll make music on like literally I just come to work and make music, you know what I mean? And then I go home to my studio and then I make more music like <laughs> yeah. So it's kinda um, I, I was looking into um, you know, how you created this album and for the most part, it said that most of it was recorded in a bus. Yeah, in my van. So I have a lot of experience with like Boss. Um, it's like a BR series, like digital recorder. Like the old, they're about this big. They have like eight to twelve tracks, depending on the model. And uh, I, my dad gave me one when I was like twelve or thirteen. He was like, here, I, you know, I don't really know how to use this, so you can have this thing or whatever. He's a musician too. And, um, I've used that like till I was like 18. And then I started recording in real studios with, with this, uh, really cool guy, Chris Hughes, who's a producer. And he did also help me with this, uh, Lost in Oblivion album. But this album, I kind of wanted to have like a really, um, really digital, like fake, like, I don't know. I was listening to a lot of, a lot of just homegrown stuff. And like, I kind of like the whole demo, like sound where it's not perfect. And I don't know, but at the same time, I wanted it to be as, as perfect as I could make it. But 
so I got a computer and I got a, I got a digital audio workstation and, um, I learned that for a little bit. And then, um, I, I lived in a bus for a long time in Jerome, Arizona in a parking lot. And, uh, every night after work, I just play music and dabble with like that digital audio workstation. I used FL studio and then I kind of got more serious about it. And I had all these ideas and pieces that were on the computer already. And, um, ended up like me and my girlfriend traveled for a few weeks and then had some more songs and ideas. And then, and then I finished them off at my mom's house. Like I got a nice set of speakers to like mix and mas- master, <laughs> mix and master them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, a few of the songs I gave to Chris to help work with because, uh, he got them sounding really good. He did skate on by derelict and, uh, lower your guns and we did some other versions too that I just, I just preferred my way because sometimes as an artist, like, um, the producer's way may be better technically, but I just really like the dirty, nasty, gross version that I made. And I thought that one, that's showed, showed more of me than the really nice one. So I saw some video of you, uh, performing. It was like a, it was like solar something. It was like a solar concert. Um, yeah, Solar Van Saturdays in Berkeley. This guy Lee does them every Saturday, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I noticed that it was just you pretty much with a looping pedal. Yeah, so sometimes I do that. Um, when I just moved here a few months ago. Like I said, it, I'm kind of a loner. It's kind of hard to um, – I typically play with my dad on bass, and I just call him. He's like – he's like – that he's the biggest supporting musician that I've ever played with because it doesn't matter where I am or where he is. If I call him, be like, dude, I need someone to play bass. He'll just, he's there, you know. He's just always in it for the music, which is the coolest thing ever. And um, but it took us a minute to find a drummer. We found a really cool drummer. Um, we played a really great show with him in San Jose in November, and then we took a little holiday break. And now. I'm working with two other musicians to join us as well. So you, it's just taking time to get everybody in the meantime, you know, over holidays and stuff. When they asked, uh, solar van asked me to play. I'm like, well, our, you know, our band isn't really here and it would just be me and my dad. And then he was struggling to, we were both just struggling to make it work with the loop pedal. And I was like, I'll just do it myself. Like <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> so it's just a little you know, I'll just play random tunes that I come up with that morning or play some of the songs, you know, like I play Lost in Oblivion or some of the setless songs. Like Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried looping uh for a bit. I, I bought a looping pedal and it's tough. <laughs> it, it was uh it was really tough because you know, you gotta follow kind of that same pattern. Uh, the entire time and to do that and then to just keep in rhythm with yourself and to, you know, try to create some other stuff. Uh, for me, it was challenging uh, personally. So I admire people that can really, um, you know, play the looping pedal and uh, kind of get along with it. Are, are you a gambling man? No, I'm not a gambling man. I, I tend to lose a lot, <laughs> which is why I stay away from people and gambling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find it ironic because this album, which can get out now uh, and go ahead and head on over to the band camp, laserbeam.bandcamp.com, is a complete 180 from your first album. To me, that seems like a very gambling, risky move. Oh, yeah. See, I, th- I think I have ADHD and I'm bipolar. So every day I wake up in a different mood. And I create different music every day. And music is my outlet for everything, especially now that I can't smoke weed anymore with this DOT federal job. So it's like I feel like kind of boxed in. So music is even a a bigger outlet right now. And I'm actually working on this album right now that has a lot of like country influence as well. See, I've always wanted to make an album – like Queens of the Stone Age's first album. And that's what that pink self-titled one was, you know, 
And then my second album, Lost in Oblivion, um, I, I go home and what I play personally myself is Lost in Oblivion type stuff where it's just mellow. It's really melodic and like, um, just melodic stuff, like kind of, uh, repetitive, like a lot of, um, I know there's not a lot of like guitar work in it. Like it's more synthesizer based and like drum machine based, but like, I don't know. I just mess around on the guitar so much and it's so much fun for me. But like this next album that I'm going to promise that's coming out, it's again, it's a 180 degree turn. It's just laser beam is just a moniker, you know, right. it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that I'm going to do another rock album or I'm going to do another, it's going to be whatever I choose and wake up that day. You know, like you know, there is no rhyme or reason. I got to ask you lastly, because you are in San Francisco. Um, I heard that you were a Niners fan and wanted to get your, your thoughts on the season about the 49ers. I love the 49ers, man. Like I've been a fan since I was a little kid and they've sucked since I was a little kid. I was born in 1995, so I just missed that window of them winning a Super Bowl. So my whole life, I've been waiting for that moment. And, yeah, so we had a good run about a decade ago, in the Jim Harbaugh years, and didn't get it done. And then Shanahan came along, and I think, like, 18 and 19 was a really good year for us. We even went to the Super Bowl. Lost the Chiefs, bummer. But whatever. I knew that our team was going to be strong. Then we lost Jimmy G, like a big old, you know, he's he's injured a lot. And then I had that horrible year with like Nick Mullins and CJ Beathard. It's like, <laughs> that was rough, you know. And then this year, the best team I think we've had since the 90s, for sure. Like, we were stacked, man. Debo. IU, Christian McCafferty, Bosa, Fred Warner, a uh, bunch of new guys like Hufanga, Javarius Ward. Like, I could keep going, you know, <laughs> Trent Williams. But to have it end like that is I told all of, all of my close friends and now you that I feel like it was watching a really good friend get, um, get like beat up like in front of you, you know, like, or just like on video, like one of those ISIS beheading videos. And there's <laughs> nothing you could do about it, man. Like, you know, six plays in and in the game is pretty much over from that UCL tear. I have yeah. I had the same injury with my elbow. So I broke my elbow and like big old, big old thing it takes a long time for it to heal. So I knew that he was going to have some trouble as soon as they mentioned elbow injury and then there's this cool doctor guy on youtube that does breakdowns mid-game he's like this is exactly what happened it's a ucl tear and yeah so that was a really horrible way to end especially uh, my girlfriend's family is from philly so they gave me a lot of crap and yeah it was humiliating <laughs> <laughs> sucked man well i i gotta tell you i'm, I'm a charger fan so, I mean, my loss I thought was a little bit more humiliating when you're up and then second half comes in, all of a sudden you lose the game. So uh, I, I, I totally feel you and uh, to, totally understand, uh, you know, all, all the uh, the trauma that comes with liking a team. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. Yeah, Chargers got it rough, too. Our other drummer, Pappy, has he's – a, he's from San Diego, so he's like – Padres, Chargers, you know, we're, yeah. we're always, we're sports nerds. Like this band <laughs> is sports nerds too, but he's got it rough for sure. You guys have it rough too, yeah. <laughs> so I shouldn't complain. <laughs> well, good talking shop with you. And uh, again, uh, I highly recommend you guys check out this album, download it and buy it from Bandcamp, uh, laserbeam.bandcamp.com. Listen to it, buy it, you know, help Lucas out if you can. That would be uh, really appreciative. Uh, lastly, we are going to leave with the song Vultures. And if you could tell me just a, a real quick tidbit about this song. Well, it was an old song 
that I have redid like three times. And then this, this one's cool because I was like, Oh, I'm going to write this in a key. I don't typically like choose a key. I just write from my ear. But, um, yeah. And I was heavily inspired by Iggy Pop's post pop depression. There's a song in there called Vultures 2. And Josh Holmes guitar playing on that album. It, it heavily inspired this album and the sound of that. And, um, I guess that's it. Cool. Uh, again, the album that you are going to absolutely love is called Lost in Oblivion. My guest has been Lucas French. And again, go check out Laserbeam at laserbeam.bandcamp.com. And for more information on the band, any links, uh, make sure to log on to entertheshell.com. Any thoughts that are plaguing you, just 